All right, friends, how are you today? Aaron Michael Eschenberg here, Honest Day, bringing you some Honest Astrology. Hello to old friends and new friends. A huge thank you, a tip of the hat to my brother from across the pond, Gregory Scott. For giving me a little shout out on Instagram, don't think I didn't notice, buddy. That's awesome. That's just absolutely awesome. You've inspired me. Gregory, you've inspired me beyond belief. You've inspired me to do these daily, so thank you for your continuous work. Let's get into it. What's going on, everybody? All right, we've got a big day ahead of us, all right? Not only is this this full moon lunar eclipse, it's just a little off the nodes. So the nodes are at 16 degrees. The eclipse is happening at 24 degrees, and it's happening at, what, 5.38 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, all right? So 5.38. So those of us who are in, uh, you know, the Eastern Time Zone, we will not see this eclipse. Um, you know, we might see the, the moon out in the middle of the day, but really this isn't going to be one of those, like, awesome nighttime eclipses for us here. Uh, but it's not the point of the visualization. The point is how we feel and what's going on. What does this all really mean? You know, there's... Let me just show you the chart for a quick moment, and then we'll, we'll dive into it. All right, so 24 degrees moon, 24 degrees sun. So now to note, <clears throat> the moon's natural home is here in Cancer, okay? The moon is Earth's natural satellite, okay? It stays very close to home, okay? Now the sun is really, you know, here in Leo, represented by Leo energy. So this is our fire that keeps on burning. This is, this is our drive, you know, where this is the accelerator, Mars here, the sun is just like, this is us, our ego expression, who we are. And at 24 degrees Cancer, you know, this is, for one, anything connected to the nodes is like saying, hey, follow this direction, follow this path. And obviously that's where the sun is going, it's lighting this way up. So it's just like, we need to follow this path. What is this path? Staying close to home. You know, staying close to home where your heart is, you know. We have to be more vulnerable. We have to, you know, bring it down, bring it down. I've been saying that for, you know, the past month since the, you know, sun's been in cancer for weeks here. And since, since we've been doing this, you know, all the North Node is all about bringing it down to a place of vulnerability, uh, allowing and accepting, you know, and not, not, it's interesting. Let me, let me show you this chart here because we often tend to find things are exaggerated in Sagittarius. You know, it's just like, you know, that journey, that wanderer. And, and, and things can kind of be, you know, uh, <laughs> here you go. Words can be served on a plate and they're very fancy and very, you know, it's just like there's a presentation involved with this. It's just like, this is a communicative sign. You know, it's like, although it's an opposite of Gemini, it's still very a, a communication sign, an education sign, although it's not an air sign, it's a fire sign. So we have Jupiter in his home sign of Sagittarius, and it's making a connection with Mars, making a connection with Venus, and making a connection with Mercury. These are our, you know, personal planets. So, so this connection to Mars is a trine. So it's just like saying, hey, we can move forward. We have, we have everything that we need to move forward confidently. You know, the sun's coming, this light is coming. It's like, it's like the, you know, the, the sun's not up yet, but you're driving through the middle of the night and behind you, the sun starts to come up. You know, so it's just like the road in front of you starts to illuminate. But it's not, you know, it's not noon yet. So the sun's like creeping up on Mars here. So it's like we're finally starting to see where we're going. And that's been like the biggest thing with this year after the first Mercury retrograde. And, you know, the first two months of the year, everyone's like, yeah, we're going, man. Like, you know, full steam ahead. And then the Mercury retrograde happened. Water signs. And now it's like, where am I going with my life? And then all of a sudden, while we're trying to figure out where we're going, life is happening around us. And we're getting pushed and pulled, right? Now, this is a big aspect of what's going on with this, this full moon lunar eclipse. It's about being pushed and pulled, okay? Personal note, I will shrink and be small if we have to be small. If we're going into a space where we have to be small. Now, I'm not talking about a small corridor. I'm talking about energy. I'm talking about vocally energy and how we handle ourselves. You know, I will be small if we need to be small but I refuse to be small for someone else to be big, right? I'm not gonna be pushed around like that. This, this full moon is really highlighting that, okay? With the, with the sun at 24 degrees Cancer, this is like, where is your power? How are you giving away your power? And then reconnecting with that power, okay? So it's like, we don't have to stiff arm people, you know, but we, 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 
as, as uh, again, that with the North Node in Cancer, with the Sun in Cancer, we've got Venus in Cancer. This is what I need. Shining my light upon this, okay? So it's about being vulnerable, about being authentic. Authentic is huge. Again, that close to homeness, you know? It's just like when we're, when we're in our ego, we're up here. When we're depressed, we're down here. The heart center, the heart space is where all the energy is. There's more electromagnetic energy in your heart than in your brain than anywhere else in your body. You know, so it's like this heart space is so, so very important to communicate, to be living through this. You know, not in our ego up here and not in our I'm not enough down here, right? So now back to this chart here. So this taking the higher road, the higher path, faith, and education, faith in oneself. We're connecting with Mars. Yes, we can move forward. We're connecting with Venus or connecting with Mercury. This is a semi-square saying like, hey, we have a fiery tongue right now. You know, we have a fiery tongue. We're finally starting to get some ground under our feet and feeling like ourselves. And all of a sudden what can happen is is we can kind of snap and we can go off. And this this annoying aspect, this semi-square is like, hey, really be wise here. Be this wise centaur, okay? Uh, don't limit yourself. Don't be small, okay? And then we've got this connection. Obviously, this, this is a quincunx at five twelfths aspect, five twelfths aspects of Venus. Now, this one, this is another... This is that this is another like annoying aspect. Like it's not just about you and your emotions. This is not just about your emotions. You know, just because you feel it doesn't mean it's there. That is that is so 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 key. You know, there is a collective consciousness. There's a collective to us all. And then further, coming back up to the moon here in Capricorn, it's about getting the work done. What is Capricorn? Capricorn is law, order, government, structure, discipline. Okay? So we have we and it's and it's karma it's so important now now for the new friends i don't know if you've if you've gone back a couple we know we're talking about some some serious greek mythology a couple days ago and talking about chronos and uranus all right now according to mythology gaia mother earth the water okay which can in this essence you can kind of look at as being cancer okay first there was the water okay the cardinal water sign water gaia and then Gaia manifested Uranus, okay? Bah! That's why Uranus is that eureka moment, the aha, the lightning striking, the, 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 you know, the light bulb turning on. Aha! I've got it! So it's just like a manifestation, then boom, here we are. Uranus was created because of Gaia's need, all right? And then together they had a bunch of, you know, a bunch of titans. And Kronos was one of those titans. And what was, what was Uranus doing but was trying to kill all the titans, all right? Trying to bury them. So what Kronos did, Kronos came back and ended up killing Uranus. And then through like this premonition, Uranus came down and said, one of your sons is going to do the same thing to you that you've done to me. And sure enough, Kronos marries his sister. I can't remember her name. Freya? I don't know. Either way, marries his sister. They have kids and he just eats them. He devours them the second they come out, according to mythology. Then she goes down, okay, and she has Zeus. She gives birth to Zeus here on Earth. Then Zeus kills Kronos. All right? So it's like this is karma. That's why I'm going into all that. This is karmic. Capricorn, Saturn, this is very karmic. So we have a release going on right now. The, the, the south node is about letting go, letting go, letting go. So have we done something? Have we done something in our past that we're afraid is going to come back and bite us? right? Are we expecting that to happen so that way we're acting in a certain manner? Are we eating our own children because we're afraid they're going to come up and take over our reign of power? Capricorn, government, power, all right? So it's like, are we being small for someone else to be big? Are we being big and asking someone else to be small? Power controls. You know, it's like, no, 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 no. We have to get rid of this thinking. We have to, we have to release. We have to release whatever we're holding on to. A single bar can be a prison if we hold on to it long enough, right? And it's just like if that glass is half empty or half full, it doesn't matter if you're holding on to it for 17 hours, it becomes extremely heavy and it will weigh you down, right? It's not just the perception. It's about how much we're holding on to.
So this, we're holding on to a lot of weight and we're relying on ourselves to say, I've, I've got to figure everything out. I've got to get all my ducks in line. I've got to put one foot in front of another. And I, you know, I've got to do this and this and this and this and this and this. And there's a structure and there's an order and there's a way to do all of these things. And if you're not for me, then you're clearly against me, you know? And it's like, whoa, that is not, it's not real. That's not the reality. Just because you feel it doesn't mean it's there. You know, we're all independently living our own lives. We're all independently going upon our own, you know, one foot in front of another. And we're all finally getting that, you know, that sun is coming up behind us as we're driving. So we're finally starting to illuminate the path in front of us. We're finally figuring out where we want to go. And then you got somebody over here saying, well, it's because you didn't do this and this and this. And you're like, I'm just driving. I'm, I'm headed to the destination, right? So sometimes we can hold, we can hold people accountable that there's, there's not an accountability for. And it's just a feeling that we have, an urge that we have. And then we need to rush and communicate this, you know, when, of course, Mercury's in retrograde. So what does that mean? Mercury's closer to Earth right now. Our antenna is, is over amplified and we can put the carriage before the horse. So this is like reeling it back in. Like, okay, yes, I have the fire right now. I have this drive. And there's that, you know, that tap on the shoulder, that little tickle that's like, hey, Yes, you do have this drive. You do have this passion. We're seeing our shadow. You know, until we see our own shadow, this full moon eclipse, until we see our own shadow, sometimes we don't know what we're doing. You know, I had a conversation, I had a conversation the other day. And then my friend said, hey, Aaron, you were, you were being kind of short. I said, oh, you know, I was like, wow, I, you know, I'm just going. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in go and I didn't even realize it. You know, so it's like, whoa, we got to reel it in. And then it's important, just like that, for our friends to reach out and communicate and let us know, like, hey, are we, are we putting the carriage before the horse? Are we running ahead when we need to kind of slow down a bit? And that's like Saturn's job in this whole big zodiac. Saturn's just like, hey, wait a minute. Slow down a second. Slow down. You know, and it's just like, look, look. This connection. Saturn is just hanging out here with the south node, this huge release of karma, huge release of karma. Now the moon, we go back a couple of hours here, it's like 3.30 in the morning. Uh, oh, I'm going the wrong way. Ah, I hit right to go backwards, but I'm, it's left. You know, this is what, 3.30 in the morning, about-ish, while we're sleeping. Now, how cool is this? Now, now we are infinite light source. We are infinite energy. But at the same time, our bodies just stop. We, we stop and we, we connect to our subconscious mind to re-energize ourselves, <clears throat> okay? So it's just like that nocturnal, that moon, that, that natural satellite <clears throat> is feeding us. It's giving us energy right? So it's just like Earth's natural satellite is hanging out with the south node of the moon, releasing, hanging out with Saturn, releasing karma early this morning. And then we have the eclipse, you know, what, uh, 17 hours later at 5.30. So it's like we have this beautiful release, this beautiful release, and this letting go, you know, I can set the weight down. Now this story has been shared a, a couple different ways. You know, but I, I love sharing analogies. That's, that's one thing I absolutely love to do to help put some of these things into perspective. You know, two monks are walking up a mountain. It's a very, very big mountain that they're at the base, okay? So they start walking up this mountain and they see this uh, geisha approaching. And the monk knows he's not supposed to talk to, touch, or interact with any geishas. Uh, but there's this giant puddle where they meet, this meeting point, this giant mud puddle comes between them. Without even thinking about it, the monk chooses the higher road, right? And he runs over this mud puddle, picks up the geisha, and sets her down on the other side. Now, the monks continue to walk up, not saying anything to each other. About four hours into this journey, legend has it, four hours into the journey, the one monk looks over to the other one and says, Why did you carry that woman? And the monk smiled and said, I set her down four hours ago. You are the one that's been carrying her. Right? So we, <laughs> hmm, that's good. That's so, that's so impactful. 
Because our own thoughts, even if we've set the weight down, our own thoughts, our own hearts can hold on to that weight and just bring us down. So then it's hard to communicate at the heart space because we, we are, we're depressed. And what do we do when we're depressed? We, we overinflate our ego. We overinflate the ego to, to notch us up and notch us up. And there's a balance with that. There's an absolute balance. And that's why it's beautiful that Mars is down there in Leo right now. It's like the little engine that could. It says, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I can keep going. I still have the stamina. I'm still making this connection over here to Chiron in Aries. You know, there's a huge breakthrough by me allowing myself to do this and by taking the high road. And by taking the high road does what? It leads to my expansion. Right? So there's, there's so much. And then we have, of course, the Uranus connections here going on to Mars and to Mercury. All right, these are both squares. This is balance, balance, balance. In order for us to break the tradition, in order for us to have this breakthrough, this Uranus Eureka moment, we have to, one, sustain, and we have to absolutely, you know, use our best judgment, our higher minds, our higher, our higher education to be able to maneuver through this. And that's what this, this you know, coming back here, 530, is what we're, what we're coming into here, right? We know who we are. We're expanding ourselves. We're connecting more with our intuitive, our emotional, our honest, vulnerable, authentic nature. We're releasing some of this stuff. I'll be honest with you. So I'm in a mentor, a mentorship program too. One, I'm, I'm an apprentice with, with the amazing wizard Rick Levine. Love you, Rick. Uh, and I mentor other astrologers. And there's a couple astrologers that reach out to me. And, I, and I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you reaching out to me? You are, you know so much. You're so knowledgeable. I mean, I, of course, I'm happy to, to communicate with them, but I'm a self-empowered astrologer, okay? That's my whole take on this, is self-empowerment. And astrology is a huge key to that, a huge aspect to that. So it's like you, somewhere in, in your vat of knowledge, you don't think you have enough. And you're still searching for more. And, 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 you know, I'll always be a student of the world. I will always have mentors and teachers the rest of my life. There's no question about that. So it's not saying to not have those things, but it's also saying to, to stop second-guessing yourself and your own powers and abilities, okay? Come into your power. That's Sabian symbol, 25 degrees cancer, all right? Now, that's at 24 degrees, but it's a 25th degree Sabian symbol. It's like coming into our power. You know, I it's a, another personal theory is that when the villains rise, when the villains come out, is when the heroes find out who they are and come to shine. So sometimes we don't know what we have inside of us. We don't know that we are the hero that just, we just weren't faced with the, you know, the villain. We weren't faced with the problem that made us come into our power. This is coming into our power. This full moon, this eclipse is coming into our power and seeing our own shadow and saying like, hey, <laughs> what am I doing? Second guessing every little thing, thinking, you know, that I'm not enough to continue for that. I have, you know, it's like we'll, we'll all be students for the rest of our lives. Thank you. You know, we are a manifestation of each other's greatest strengths and weaknesses. You are going to teach me to be a better astrologer every single day. You know, that's how that's the beauty of how this stuff works. So it's like for us, for right now, for this, this, this moon, this eclipse, maybe there isn't a villain out there. Maybe there isn't a bad guy, okay? But it's, it's us coming into our power, us recognizing ourselves that we are the hero, recognizing that we do have what it takes to rise up, to shine, to change, to break tradition and to change and to make an honest impact in this world where we have a lot of friends out there that are very confused, you know? And, and when we have confusion met with, um, uncertainty. If, if a person's not fully confident in themselves and they're, they're met with this confusion, it can be snappy. It can be short. It can be, you know, short tempered. It can be, um, what did we just talk about the other day? You know, it's just like, we're not, we're not being patient enough. You know, it's just like, are we treating the children, the adults the same as we're treating the children as far as our patience goes with how we're communicating? And, you know, are we handling these situations with kid gloves? Handling them with kid gloves. And that's part of coming into our power as well. It's just like, ah, I understand. I don't have to be snippety. I don't have to um, 
handle this in this manner. I can, I can, I can absolutely walk through this step by step, communicate exactly what's needed to communicate. And it's just like that slow and steady focus because Mercury being so close right now, our antenna's overloaded. Our antenna's overloaded, all right? So it's just like we have a million things going on a minute. We have all of these things that we want to say, all these things that we want to do and talk about. And then further with Venus in, in Cancer, we have a lot of things that we're feeling right now. We have a lot of things that we're feeling right now. And of course, we've got Venus, no, let me go back here. Venus in an exact opposition to Saturn today. Okay, so not only is it a full moon lunar eclipse, but, you know, we've got transformative Pluto up here helping us out, saying, like, look, we got to let go, let go, let go, let go. And over here is like, follow this, follow this, follow, 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 follow your heart, follow your feelings. But know that it's not just you. So it's such a balance. I mean, there's tons of paradoxes within the Zodiac. I mean, and that's, and that, there's just within life, not within the Zodiac, but just within life, right? So we're releasing, we're letting go of emotions, we're letting go of the idea that this terrible concept that we're not enough, right? We're able, we're, you know, to, to like get this monkey off of our back and able to really move forward and also doing this higher expansiveness and this great emotional release and then Venus opposing Saturn. It's like, hey, little buddy, you know, that's not an easy aspect. So we have a lot of positivity going on, and then we have that. And that's like this crux of like, it's not all about you. You know, and then like this Saturn is this big, you know, Venus is this, this, you know, beautiful little angel. And we've got this giant Saturn. It's just like, stop. Stop with the emotion. Stop thinking... You know, again, that's Saturn's job. It's to squeeze. It's the Saturn squeeze. For one, we're going to find out, we're going to test the limits. If this is big, that's bigger. This is the biggest. That's more, that's the most. Saturn, you know, it's the test. So Saturn wants to put this squeeze on things. Saturn wants to kind of like really perfect it and squeeze that, that coal into a diamond. And then we've got Venus coming over here, and it's just, just like, well, I feel this way. And, and then there's, you know, this is what's right, and this is what's wrong, because this is how I feel. And Saturn is just hitting the brakes hard. You know, so there's, there's great breakthroughs today, as well as there is tension. There is friction, undeniably. Okay, this tension and friction. Where's the release? Where's the release of Saturn and Venus? It's the quincunx to Jupiter, okay? Not being over-exaggerating, not being overly, but just absolutely having the faith, the communication, the higher self, you know, the higher knowledge, okay? So when we're communicating with that self, it's like, okay, it's not just about me. This transformation is with everybody. Everyone is dealing with this in a different way, you know, amongst themselves. And then, and then together, you know, the community together, Hand in hand, we cross the river. Hand in hand, you know, Red Rover, Red Rover, we get to where we're going with the community. You know, so sinking down, sinking down, following your intuition, following your heart, following your passion, following your dreams, and letting go of whatever it is that's holding you back that says, I got to do this and this and this and this and this and this before I can do this, right? Letting go of control. Let go of the control that you have. It's just like, you're not in control. We're not in control. There are so many outside forces that it's just like, surrender, baby. Surrender. We have our intentions. We have our intuition. Follow that and, and surrender. Again, it's paradoxical, but it's the absolute truth. How do we surrender and accelerate at the same time? By putting one foot in front of the other. We don't know where we're going, but we're going to get there, right? We're going to get there. <laughs> All right. All right. That is our full moon. That is our lunar eclipse that's going on today. Next one we have, I believe, is Christmas on December 25th. Right? So, that's exciting. And then we've got another one coming up on January 12th, 11th or 12th. That's the big one. The big one. We've got the Saturn-Pluto conjunction happening then. So, let me, let me, to wrap this up, all right, the new moon solar eclipse are new beginnings. This is the checkpoint. You know, this is Checkpoint Charlie. This is like, hey, check in with yourself right now. Are you shrinking when somebody else is just, just expanding? That's not right. That's not sustainable. 
you're going to be stressed out <laughs> you're going to be stressed out and you're going to explode you know we have to be even things have to be even moving forward so if other people are trying to control you okay we don't need to explode communicatively we don't need that that leo fire communication energy to blow up on people that's why it's saying hey take the high road here take a moment take a breath hmm during this retrograde Connect with yourself, connect with where we're going, connect with your higher self, and then we can communicate. Hey, no, I'm, I'm, this, is, this is where we're at. I'm not willing to, to be so small for you to be big. And I hope that analogy is making enough sense. Like that, that is so the key here. Um, compromise, of course. Compromise, of course, but this is just about, an, it's about being equals about being equals as we travel and move forward together, is seeing each other as equals and finding our power that we might not have known we had. So then we get to grow. And then we can empower others furthermore. Like my friend Gregory, right? Like he's, he's a powerful influencer. Powerful influencer. You know, if he says, this is great, people flock to this is great. If he says this is bad, but you know, the, the power of influence is so, 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 so huge, right? Now we've got, I guess I'm not quite done with this after all. So, that's another aspect here with this Saturn stuff. And this is public, uh, uh, the Capricorn stuff with public image. This is 10th house, public image and control and the power of influence that, that the authority has. Saturn is the authority, okay? Now you've got someone like, I, I'm a fashion photographer. We've got some lights behind me right here. So it's like, you know, I follow some Vogue runway and, and some of these things on Instagram. And it's, they're putting out recently like, First dates are awful in a place of uncomfortability. And this is like a major, major thing. And then, of course, there's like 30,000 people like, oh, my God, I agree. They're the worst. It's like, no, they're, if you don't know yourself, if you don't know who you are and you don't know, the, you know, if you know yourself, sitting across from someone and having a conversation is really freeing. It's very beautiful. You get, you know, you, you get to meet each other. This, that's the coolest thing in the world is making connections. Like, that's awesome, you know. So the power of influence, man. So it's just like, you know, that is a big influence that makes us small. Okay. Do we see how that's going there? This big, small thing. So it's just like, oh, the, well, the dating is, that it is, it's true. That's difficult. You know what I mean? So I might as well just throw in the towel and give up and then just going to shrink down. And... No, you might be a great influencer on that. You know, you might be great photography or, or whatever, but but we have to decipher and make the decisions on, on what, we, what we're following and what we're not and where we're going is we're heading into this new future, this new age of Aquarius and that's where the moon's going, right? Come tomorrow, the moon's gonna be, you know, on the 17th, the moon's gonna be in Aquarius. That's forward thinking, futuristic thinking. We can't be held up on, on these old ideas, these old beliefs, specifically with Uranus going down there, the ruling planet, associated with with uh <laughs> with aquarius down in taurus you know this old stubborn tradition the most stubborn sign in the zodiac it's like break this stuff up break up these concepts that life is difficult or or you know it's just that's not reality we get to choose our own reality and we get to find our power today we get to see our shadow and say hey this I'm identifying or I'm not identifying and I'm going to go toward this, right? It's almost that, it's like that Aries, this Chiron and Aries, you know, what, is, what does Aries do? It goes toward what's good and it goes away from what's bad. It is the initial, it's the initiation, the spark, you know, and right now with Chiron, it's just like we're healing ourselves. We are changing and transforming who we are to ourselves and having that further, although that's not making it a connection, is this faith. Faith, 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 faith in ourselves, okay? Faith that just because we're influenced by this big, you know, giant media, you know, we get to choose on, on, on what we like and what we don't, you know? And, and we can choose if, if we say, you know, yeah, first dates are terrible and awful and awkward. Or you can, you know, find a value in love in them. You know, the excitement of them, excitement of dating, the excitement of going out in the world and meeting somebody, all kinds of stuff. All right. That's, that's me for the day. I think I'm, I think I've ex exhausted, over-exaggerated 
what's going on with this full moon lunar eclipse. I mean, there's just so much energy. There's so much positive energy. And it's and it's just like getting this unstuck energy too. You know, this like stubborn old stuck energy. It's, it's like get the gooby gone, you know? And we're just like freeing this kind of stuff up and we get this like, <sighs> breathing in that good ass prana, baby. Right, Ralph Smart says that, I love it. So, have a beautiful day, have an awesome eclipse. Follow that high road. It's not just about us and our emotions, but it is about us being vulnerable, being authentic, being compassionate, being communicative, expressing ourselves and expressing ourselves with others in the highest form that we can. And that leads to our breakthrough, that leads to our growth. God, the whole video should just been that ending. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me. Thank you for all the new friends coming out. I appreciate you. Greg, if you're watching this, thanks, man. You are absolutely awesome. Continue to inspire me. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow.